Today's story is from a sister in Germany. God showed her the future of the LGBTQ plus community and what he expects from them. Please watch until the end to fully understand her experience. Nothing has been added or removed. Hello, my name is Annalise Friedrich. I grew up in a family where we always honored God. My parents were very religious and taught me to live in a way that pleases God. Every morning we prayed together and every evening we studied the Bible. The Bible was not just a book in our house. It guided how we lived our lives. My father, though he didn't talk much, strongly believed in God's word. He always reminded me that what the Bible says isn't just advice. It's a command we must follow. God's word is the truth, he would say, and it must guide your life. When I started high school, I decided to keep living by the values my parents had taught me. I knew the world outside was different, but I believed I could stay on the right path. Soon, I made new friends. One of them was a kind girl, and we got along well. Our friendship started simple, just chatting between classes and studying together sometimes. But as time passed, I noticed I was feeling something different for her. At first, I thought it was just the closeness that comes from being good friends. But the more time we spent together, the more I realized my feelings for her were unusual. This new affection confused me. I tried to ignore it, knowing it didn't match what I had been taught. I started avoiding her, making excuses not to hang out, hoping the feelings would go away. But no matter what, we kept crossing paths at school events, during group projects, and even in the hallways. It felt like something was pulling us together, no matter how much I tried to stay away. Over time, my strong beliefs began to weaken. The more we were together, the less I wanted to fight against my feelings. What I once thought was wrong started to feel normal. I convinced myself that caring for someone couldn't be wrong. I began to question what I had been taught. Slowly, our friendship grew into something more, and I found myself in a situation I never expected. It didn't happen overnight, but gradually, I gave in to the temptation that had been in the background. We started showing our affection in ways I knew were unnatural. We met in secret and satisfied our sexual desires in ways I had never imagined. But by then, my sense of right and wrong was unclear. The lines I had once been sure of were now crossed, and I was in a situation I never thought possible. It wasn't long before others noticed my changed behavior. What we thought was hidden became clear to everyone around us. People whispered about us in the hallways, and soon it felt like everyone knew. The disapproving looks, the pointing fingers, and the quiet but harsh comments became part of my daily life. I could see the disappointment in the eyes of those who knew me, especially from the church community that had watched me grow up. The respect I once had seemed to disappear. At first, the judgment was silent, just long stares and quiet conversations that stopped when I entered the room. But soon, people started confronting us. Some came with concern, others with anger, quoting Bible verses and warning us about the path we were on. They told us to repent and turn away from what they saw as sin. They reminded us of the teachings we had grown up with, the same ones I had once believed in. But by then, my heart had hardened. We argued back, using the same teachings we had been given to justify our actions. God is love, we said, and he made us this way. If he didn't want us to feel this way, why would he put these feelings in our hearts? We convinced ourselves that we were right, that the love we felt was natural and blessed by God because he is a loving God who accepts everyone as they are. We believed that those who judged us were narrow-minded, unable to see the bigger picture of God's unconditional love. We argued that if God truly loved us, he wouldn't condemn us for loving each other. In our minds, we were defending a love that was misunderstood and persecuted. On April 8, 2022, after a lecture, we were heading back, talking and laughing like nothing could go wrong. As we crossed the street, a car, speeding out of control, came straight at us. There was no time to react. The crash was sudden and violent, and then everything went dark. When I woke up, I was standing by the road, looking at a scene that made my heart freeze. 
On the ground lay my body, lifeless and twisted. What shocked me more was that I could see both my body and my friend's body, who had been right beside me. I expected to see her soul too, but there was nothing. Fear hit me, and I felt something strange, like a heavy darkness falling on me. It felt like it was pulling me somewhere. I tried to fight it, but it was too strong. As it wrapped around me, I was pulled into a new place. The darkness closed in completely, and I found myself in a place beyond imagination. It was dark, the air was foul, and before I could understand where I was, dark figures surrounded me. They were demons, full of anger and hatred. They looked at me with burning eyes, and I knew there was no escape. Suddenly, the torment began. The demons clawed at me, tearing through my flesh like paper. The pain was unbearable and endless. I screamed for help, but my cries were drowned out by others also suffering. I saw countless souls around me, each in agony. They begged for mercy, but none came. Everywhere I looked, there was suffering. Souls were torn apart, burned, and crushed by relentless demons. There was no peace, only constant brutality and despair. It felt like an eternity, though it was just a short while, maybe 10 minutes in human time. In the midst of the torment, just when I thought I could bear no more, I felt a force pulling me away. It was powerful yet gentle, like a shield. The demons couldn't touch me anymore. Slowly, the darkness lifted, and the pain began to fade. As I was pulled from hell, a light appeared, growing brighter and warmer. Then I saw Jesus Christ. His presence filled the space with holiness, making hell seem even worse in comparison. He didn't look like the pictures I had seen. He was more real, more profound. His eyes, full of love and sorrow, looked through me, seeing every part of my soul. He didn't speak, but his silence said everything. In his presence, I felt exposed. Every sin, every lie I had told, was laid bare. His purity reflected back on me, showing me the truth of my heart. I didn't need him to speak. I knew the weight of my actions. I fell to my knees, pleading for mercy, realizing how far I had strayed. The excuses I had used to justify my actions seemed meaningless now. I understood that what I had done was deeply wrong. The shame overwhelmed me, and all I could do was beg for forgiveness, knowing I didn't deserve it but hoping for his mercy. As I knelt before Jesus, a sense of his love and mercy filled the space. Despite my sins and the terrifying reality of hell, I felt his desire for my repentance and salvation. His presence urged me to turn from my old life and accept the path he had opened to heaven. I finally understood the true meaning of his sacrifice. Jesus had suffered and died not just for humanity, but for me personally. His death was the only way to bridge the gap between my sin and God's holiness. The path to heaven was clear, but it required repentance a complete turning away from my old life and accepting Jesus as my Savior. As these truths settled in, Jesus' presence began to fade. The light dimmed and his holiness and love withdrew. I didn't want him to leave. I longed to stay in his presence, but suddenly I was back in my body, lying in a hospital bed. My body ached from the accident, but the physical pain was nothing compared to the turmoil inside me. I couldn't stop thinking about what I had experienced, the horrors of hell, the mercy of Jesus, and the gift of a second chance. The accident was devastating, but it changed everything. I was alive, but my friend wasn't. She had died at the scene, and the reality hit me hard. Our paths had diverged. She had gone on, while I had been given another chance to repent and live for the Lord. The loss of my friend weighed heavily on me. I couldn't stop wondering where her soul was. The thought of her suffering like I had filled me with sorrow. The encounter with Jesus had marked my soul deeply. I knew my life couldn't be the same. His love and mercy had broken through my defenses, and I accepted him as my savior. This acceptance wasn't just emotional. It was a deep, life-changing decision. I realized I could no longer live for myself. 
My life was now in Jesus' hands, and I was determined to follow him, no matter the cost. The transformation wasn't just inside. It showed in every part of my life. The old me, who had justified sin and resisted God, was gone. I was a new creation in Christ. With this transformation came a mission. I felt called to reach out to the LGBTQ community with a message of love and truth. Many, like me, were lost, deceived by the lies of the world. They needed to hear the truth about God's design and His love for them. God doesn't want them to continue down a path of destruction. He wants them to repent, turn from the lies, and accept the life He offers, freedom, truth, and eternal joy. I knew this message would be hard for some to hear, but it needed to be spoken. I felt responsible to encourage other Christians to extend love, not hate, to those struggling with sin, including the LGBTQ community. We are called to show Christ's love and grace, even when it's hard. Love is our most powerful tool to draw others to the truth. Hatred only drives them away. We must show compassion and understanding, just as Jesus showed us. Besides showing love, prayer is vital. We need to pray for the lost, asking God to convict their hearts and lead them to repentance. Prayer is powerful in bringing spiritual awakening and transformation. It helps others see the truth of God's word and his desire for their salvation.